came across from England in sailing ships years before. And my grandma Robinson, my dad's mother, she was a little tiny thing. And I, I can remember her because she was 93 when she died. And I was nine years old. No, I was 10 because my dad died when I was nine. Is she the nice grandma? Oh, she, yeah, she was really <laughs> nice. She was a sweet. My grandma Seguin was on me. She'd had everything her way, a big home, and Grandpa Seguin was a carpenter, and he, he made homes all over Fillmore for people, and they had a nice big home. But uh, my grandma Seguin, she was, she was kind of French, and and I don't know, or some Indian. Oh, that's where the Seguin comes from? Well, no, I don't know if my grandpa was part Indian, but she was, I know. Seguin's French. And Grandpa Seguin was more French. So French Indian mix. Yeah. Scottish for them. And Irish. So that's, that's where you get the cheekbones. Yeah, I guess. Go like this. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> My teeth, my teeth stop me. Yeah. <laughs> I was the youngest of 11. So you had 10 brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. and but they, well, they had, uh, Leo was their first child, and he died at eight days. So then they had the 10 and raised the 10 of us. So 12 were born and then 11 survived. 11 was born, only 11. Oh. Ten, 10 of us lived. Oh. My mother lived on a farm and I had been home taking care of her for, except from the time I was 13 until, because she couldn't do anything. Where was your dad? He had died when I was nine. <coughs> and we had moved to Fillmore. We had a home on, on a farm down in Flowell, Utah, and uh, it was too cold down there for my mother for the arthritis, so she moved up to a house that her mother had next to her big home, and we lived there, and I went to school from there, but I still had, my sis older sisters had all married by then, and moved. My brothers, uh, Wallace, he was out herding sheep in the desert all by himself at 17. And uh, he made $21 a month. And he's bored and room. And Eldon, the next brother, he went in the CC camp. What's that? He got old enough. CC <coughs> camp? What's CC camp? What is that? It's uh, what was a CC camp, Bob? It's a uh, uh, congressional conservation court. So I had to take care of my mother. So before I'd go to school in the morning, I was up close to high school by then. I would have to uh, take care of her, clean her up, and get her out of bed. <coughs> and it was a chore because I had to had to put her in a wheelchair just till I came home at noon and gave her her lunch. And I had a broomstick, and I'd put it on her chair and on her bed. And then I'd slide it under her, 
and slide her on that broomstick and it hurt her and she'd moan because her old bones were so, her flesh was so foregone. But I'd get her up before I went to school. And then I'd come home at noon and check her out and knew if she'd to see if she needed anything and give her her lunch. And then I'd go back to school. So in the first year of high school, I quit school because I couldn't do it and take care of it at the house and take care of my mother. My sisters helped a lot and would come and take her and take her places, but she had to be lifted into her wheelchair. And her hands were all crippled and under like this, and her legs were in a knee and raising from arthritis. And her, she was in a sitting position. The cords were drawn. So her legs were permanently mm -hmm. in, in that, that position. position. So you met Grandpa when you were 17. Um, Where did you meet him? I met him. I was walking down the street in Fillmore, this little town I was raised in, with a girlfriend. And he was in his uniform walking across the street going into this. His mother had a friend that had a <coughs> clothing store there. And we both said, oh, look at that good looking guy. <laughs> he was too, he was handsome. And I didn't think anything about it. I just thought he was good looking. But that night, I was going out with another boy from the next little town over on a date. And he, he came to Emerson came to the dance, but he didn't, he had a, a girl that he had known before with him. And anyway, we got to da dancing and he kind of slept her off and I slept my boyfriend off and he took me home. And 10 days later, we, Wait a minute. Were, we were married, Wait a minute, 10 days later, <laughs> we, we were inseparable for 10 wow. days only, nights we'd, I'd go home. Everyone in town said, well, I'm sure she had to get married. Oh, I only knew him 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> but we were married 60 years. Oh, I was, I was going to ask what a shivery. Shivery? Yeah. Do you remember? It's when a couple gets married and they go to meet all the family and they don't realize it but the family has gotten together and they have tubs and all kinds of music, musical things and, and they greet them all at the door when they come back from their wedding and then they take them out and they separate them and the men take the men someplace and the girls take the girls and they hide them out someplace so the men can't find them. <laughs> That was called a sugar eating. Well, then don't they come back when you find each other? Usually they do by coming back at the house, but you yeah. hide out. I had, they had a sugar eat for Emerson and I. Mm -hmm. So what happened? What happens after you find each other? We didn't do, do much of anything. We just hid out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you supposed to be doing? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, Why do you think I had so many kids? <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. So don't they bang pots or something when you're supposed to be in there? Yeah. Yeah. When you get married, right? They bang everything around and horns and everything else. Let sure everyone in the bed. country know you. That, that you're doing it. Short sheet the bed. <laughs> yeah, they short sheet the bed <laughs> while you're out. That's tuck them in so your feet don't go down in the bed like they should. Yeah. <laughs> and so they do, they like pull all these tricks on you. Yeah. In small communities more, well, they usually expect it. So they kind of hide out. But you, if you don't get them one time, you wait and get them another time. Okay, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if somebody got married and they were older, would you still have one? Does it matter? Yeah, yeah they would. If they'd never, you know, if they're just getting married. So you had one. Yeah. And how old were you? Well, when I got married, I was 17. And 
Grandpa was? Uh, he was uh, 20, 30. You weren't even legal? I had my mother with me, though. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> we had to take her with us. We went to Nephi, Utah, which was about 100 miles from Fillmore, Utah. Not quite that far, but anyway, we had to take her with us because I wasn't old enough to get married. So the bishop came out to the car, the Mormon bishop that married us, came out to the car and married us so Mama could say it was okay. <laughs> because, and that's, she came out to the car because your, your mom was in a wheelchair. Yeah. So it was well, too hard to get her in and out. She couldn't uh, get out. She had to be lifted out. So you were taught um, that you follow your husband no matter what he's doing. Yeah. And that's just the way you were taught and raised how to be a wife. That's right. You wait, wait, wait until you're sure you're... <laughs> In love with them, and, and you can't, you're not supposed to be getting a divorce every time you turn around. Some people did even then. My old, my sister Abby, she got a divorce two or three times. So you moved how many times? It seemed like forever. <laughs> All the time. So you led a pretty nomadic lifestyle. Well, you and the I, kids. I moved wherever Emerson had work. Until she got that was the moving. way you just did it. That's the way I was taught. If you get married, you do what your husband has has to do to survive. Well, I didn't like it sometimes, but after we got moved, it was fine. But when we first got married, we lived in an old abandoned house up on a hill. Three rooms, three great big rooms, and it had been a, a place of house of ill repute. <gasps> For the miners that were had mined around there, and it was all built out of uh, adobe. Adobe. It was warm inside, and each room had a fireplace in the corner, one corner. And we just cleaned out two rooms, and lived in there and stored our things in the other one. And Emerson was running a mine that his dad had, and. Mohawk. The Mohawk mine out there, just off the highway. And we stayed there for 10 years. You stayed in the abandoned house for 10 years? Well, we moved to different places in the desert, but I don't remember all of it. Is this Arizona, or Utah, or California? In California is where the Mohawk is. It's right to, uh, everything we knew, all the, the little Cafes and things are all gone. So it's just up on the side of a hill. You can still now? see. Yeah, you can still see the road going up to it and an old dump there. And there's still some wood. That's where, the house you lived in? It's still? You know, this is where the, the we, mine. they dump the ore that they bring down from the mine. And oh, I lived in shacks. I lived in <laughs> railroad cars. <laughs> railroad cars. And, so when you were first married and you didn't have any kids, you would be there by yourself until Grandpa came home. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. Well, we were on the bank of the Colorado River then. Oh. Over by uh, Parker. Parker Dam, right? Parker. That's where Grandpa was helping to build the car yeah. Parker Dam. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be there by yourself, yeah, and waiting. Build, and I'd just walk around and carry my gun with me because, and there was an old guy lived up on the hill a little ways and he never bothered me and I didn't I'd say good morning to him and he would but that was about it but I wasn't nervous of him because he never came by the house. Were there other people there besides him? No, no it was just us up there. It's kind of lonely. <laughs> I'd never lived like I lived on a farm but it wasn't, wasn't scary. But being on the bank of the Colorado River, I never liked water. No. Never, never, I never liked even go swimming. I was scared of it. And then we moved there by that Colorado River, and I didn't. I'd go down and sit on the bank with, with Emerson, and he'd fish. And we'd, or I, went, I finally started fishing, but I didn't like water. And that Colorado was pretty. It was fast. 
Ten years later, I had Marnay. And ten years later, you had Marnay. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't planned, I take it? Yes, she was. I wanted one more before I got any older. The others, some of them just happened. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> yeah, who was it that just happened? <laughs> well, I, in those days, you just didn't use anything. Oh, protection. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... And, and you did it to keep warm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so when you had Monty's... I've been married ten months. It wasn't eight. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Why did you name him Monty? Emerson was up in Monterey, California. So that's the name. And our last <laughs> name was Ray. So we named Monty, Monty Ray. <laughs> and so... and. You're, you get teased sometimes because your name is Fay Ray, mm -hmm. and people think that you are the Fay Ray that was in yeah. King Kong's hand. <laughs> I'm not quite as old as her. A little oh. bit younger. You're, li <laughs> you're a little younger. She just died. 80? Oh. 96. 96. Oh, yeah, you're a lot younger. I'm, only, I'm 84. That isn't too much. <laughs> tell, them Close much enough. tell them how much money it cost up in 2014. <laughs> $35. In the hospital for ten days. Thirty-five dollars. Doc Evans had some stock, and he traded the stock. Yeah. To Dad for the thirty-five dollars. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He said if if you'll let ha, let me have the stock, he told Emerson, I won't charge you anything. So Emerson did. <laughs> Gave him a stock that was worthless, and you well, got it money. Well, it wasn't at the time. It sounded good. Yeah. But it wasn't long, and they found out mine goes down. <laughs> and you were in the hospital for ten days. They they always kept you for ten days in those days. And you were eighteen at the time you had money. Mm -hmm. And so they kept you in the hospital for eighteen days. For ten days, about ten. Days. I mean, sorry, ten days. Yeah. And so then you had Bob. How many years later? Nineteen. Six, Seventeen months. Seventeen months later. Seventeen months later. And then Sharon was two years later. Two years later. So almost every two years. Mm -hmm. And then Lorreen. How many years between Sharon and Lorreen? Two. <laughs> <laughs> the pattern. Did you have a feeling you were having twins? <laughs> I looked like a mountain. <laughs> Emerson said, you look just like a mountain walking towards me. How big were you? Like this? Oh, I was out like this because <laughs> I lost every place else. I lost weight. And then didn't you say you were so big that to turn around in bed you had to sit up to turn around because yeah, you had just to walk? Well, I had to walk <laughs> around. I'd slide off and kind of push myself up with the head of the bed and get myself sitting up, and then I could get up. But, oh, what a mess. <laughs> but that's the only set of queens I had. But he didn't live. And I, he was perfect, too. I don't know why. They, if they nowadays they would have had the breathing things and they could have brought him too because he was perfect. He was bigger than their mother. They had a healthy. But I kept one of them anyway. Do you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think about him? Oh yeah. We had the woman there at the hospital thought it was silly that we didn't just throw the body, let her take care of it. And I knew As what opposed she to having a funeral? Yeah. She said, it, well, it, was, it didn't live. I said it did for a second or two. He did. And anyway, we just, uh, Dr. Evans said, we'll, have, we'll take care of it, Faye. He said, you make your own plans. And so we had it buried by my mother, right. up above my mother's and father's grave. So he is resting with your mother and father. Yeah, grandfather and grandmother. And now grandpa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
um, the first four? I <laughs> got out in the desert. Mescal Springs. Mescal Springs, and then we went to Arizona and took the kids with us. Oh, that's when Grandpa worked on Parker Dam. Yeah. And you uh, had to live in a tent on the side of the river? Mm-hmm. And how many little kids did you have? Just one. Yeah. Just one at that time, but before that. Just Monty was with you, and you lived in a tent on the side of the river. And then you got pregnant, and then did Monty live with you on the banks of the Colorado River? I, I guess he had to. No, he, no, he was born after was, Grandpa went to Monterey. The, uh, we had to go down, I had to go down below because there, there was no place. Uh, I went, no, I went to Vilma's house. Which is in Utah. It was in Utah. I went there at, and she helped me and then I went there with the other kids when they came along. And, and so every time you got pregnant, you went back to Utah to have the baby? Yeah, because I, I would like the doctor there. Doctor so you went back home to have your babies and then you brought them back well, to California? Well, where we were, where we were, there wasn't any, a doctor. There wasn't even school real close. So you had to move from place to place with toddlers. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of the places you lived with toddlers. China Ranch, the old China Ranch mine. Or ranch, and I lived out there when we were first married. I think we had Mommy and I think Bob was born not long after we left there. Well, we lived in the old three-room shack. Adobe house, not a shack. Oh, not the shack. We're in the Adobe, Adobe house. Okay. <laughs> you like old shacks, huh? <laughs> I always had them fixed up pretty neat, though. We didn't. Emerson worked on them, and I did. And we were in the old Adobe house, and this plane was going so low over us, and it smacked into the mountain. And Emerson started running up there to see if he could help. And I ran down, got in the car, and drove down to the little ta uh, station down below us and called the, they called the police and the ambulance. We didn't, I didn't know if people were dead or, or what. But Emerson got up there and the, a couple of guys were wa wandering around. They'd been injured, but they, uh, and their head was bleeding, and Emerson made them sit down, and he said, there's an ambulance, we'll be here. And he kept, they'd get up and start wandering, and they were so out of it, they didn't know what they, they were, were doing. They were all sheriffs on top of it. And they were sheriff. it was a sheriff uh, group that was going to Las Vegas for a sheriff's convention. Now, at one point, you had said that you lived in a train car. That was down at Pops Oasis in Jean Nevada. Oh, so how what how how did you end up with a train car? Because he was running it out. It's, uh, it was fixed up inside. Oh, okay. And Dad was working for Pop Simon. And he was working for Pop Simon that owned the place. And so it was fixed up like a house, and and it was a regular train car. Mm-hmm. It had three three small rooms in it. And you had how many of the kids there? Four kids? Four of them, I think. So all, all the kids were, so this was later, you moved from a, a, a house of ill repute <laughs> to a train car. No, no we <laughs> there to Wheaton Springs. Uh, Wheaton Springs and then to the train car. Yeah. And you said that sometimes life was pretty hard. It was. It was yeah. tough. Now looking back. I had to scrub clothes on a scrubbing board and haul the water to do my wash or else go, I'd go down the hill usually if, when we lived in that old Dobie house. And I had built up rocks to where I could put a tub there because the water was down the hill. And I'd put the water in that old tub and heat, heat it because you could push wood under oh, the So rock. the fire would be under the tub and mm -hmm. you heat it and that's where you would wash your clothes? And I'd take hot water out of the tub <coughs> and put it in another tub and, and uh, 
I'd scrub my clothes and, and then when I got through I'd empty that water and rinse them all. And what about what year would this be? Well, let's see, it was when the girls were small. Monty and Bob. So in the late forties, early fifties. Mm -hmm. In the fifties probably. Well, we were up there on the hill in forty two. And then we lived there. Sure. Now the, it could be in the early, the late forties. Yeah. When you were doing your laundry in two tubs with yeah. a fire. And did they have automatic washers at that time? Uh, not like they have nowadays. Eventually, I got an old ringer type washer. Is that where you crank it and put it through? To put the the close through the ringer. Yeah. In fact, I have. There's one down here. <laughs> There's, this there's one here, we should probably get a picture that of That vacant building out here? Yeah. There's one sitting in there. And that's like your very first washing machine. It is mine. Machine, but it was similar to your very first washing machine. Yeah, only it's a newer one. We didn't have that much comfort. I had to haul a bucket of water if I wanted it from way down the hill up to that old house on the mountain there. So you had to a one bucket of water. You just had to haul it one bucket at a time? Well, I didn't feel that calm, too, but that far. <laughs> I did sometimes, not the great big buckets, but that's how, if Emerson, for, he, he'd do, do pretty good and bring water up and everything, but if he went to work and I didn't have it, then I would go get it. In the meantime, I ended up killing a rattlesnake every time I... So, turned around. So did you have to carry a gun with you when you went to get the water? Usually I had one close. So okay, where would you keep, you had the water, right? Where'd you keep the gun? 